Welcome to the Lexington Public Library's Tales from the Kentucky Room podcast, where we discuss everything Lexington and Fayette County history. I'm Miriam, and in each episode of this podcast, we will feature a guest that will share a piece of local history. So thank you for tuning in and enjoy. Hi, everyone. Today, our podcast guest is Denise Shanks. She's going to tell us the story of Smiley Pete, the infamous pooch that roamed the streets of downtown Lexington. Denise Shanks is a librarian at Central. She has been with the Lexington Public Library for 25 years. She specializes in genealogy research. So if you have any questions for Denise, you can submit them on the podcast link at our website or come visit her in the Kentucky Room. Take it away, Denise. Thank you, Miriam. All right. (laughs) Smiley Pete, a friend to all, a friend of all. The legend began. Around 1944, a small white and black dog claimed an area of downtown around Limestone and Main Streets as his territory. The dog was humorously called the Magnificent Moocher, the Panhandling Pooch, or Canine Conman. But his friends called him Smiley Pete for the way he greeted people with a toothy grin as his tongue lolled out of one side of his mouth. Pictures of Smiley in the newspaper show him with two black eye patches that make him look like he was wearing an old-fashioned aviator's helmet and goggles. He soon grew to be a medium-sized dog who had become rather portly in his last years. Speculation had it that he was a mix of Spitz, Shepherd, and Bird Dog, but no one knows his parentage for sure. Rumor held that there was a Winchester Kennel Club prize-winning grandmother on his family tree as well. Some folks said that his owner had tried to keep the dog at home, but the pooch always returned to the streets where he took up permanent residence at the four corners of Limestone and Maine, and in the hearts of many citizens working and living in downtown Lexington. So it was natural that Smiley Pete became a local celebrity and a favorite filler with the two local newspapers, The Herald and The Leader. Both papers printed stories to update locals about the antics and welfare of the affable pup. Jack Lewin, a reporter with the Lexington Herald, wrote an article about Pete that was published in the January 1955 issue of a national outdoors magazine called Animal Life. As he aged, the papers published pleas to stop giving him candy so the plump pooch could get down to a healthy weight. This canine, man about town, trotted the streets at Liberty which was a luxury had by fewer and fewer dogs by even the 1940s, because leash and fencing laws for dogs were being more strictly enforced. The ordinances were designed to control rabies outbreaks, livestock kills, and other problems caused by roaming canines. Like other law-abiding dogs, Smiley Pete had a dog license, and it lists himself as his own owner. Of course, all that roaming meant that he was fingered as the sire of many pups around town. A picture in a March 1952 newspaper shows some of Pete's little, fuzzy, cute pups offered for adoption in a downtown florist shop window. People speculated that he could tell when the traffic lights changed because he never had an accident and was said to have sat down to wait for the light to change so that he never crossed against the light. That's better than some people. Pete stayed mostly around the intersection of Main and Limestone, but occasionally he would venture south to UK campus, or as far north as 3rd Street. He became a frequent drop-in student at some UK classes, popping in and out, as it pleased him. How many students wish they had had that kind of freedom? He seems to eventually have worked out a regular route, enjoying food, water, and treats along his way. He was a mannerly gentleman who lived happily on the dog-loving largesse of admiring Lexingtonians 
and did not lack for food, baths, or medical attention. Pete did have his faults, though. He was always barking at loud trucks and motorcycles. He didn't care much for keeping clean, and he absolutely refused to stay inside even when it was for his own good. When bad weather came, Lexington City policemen would fix up a cardboard box thickly lined with papers. They put the bed near the setback doorway in front of the Brooks Clothing Store at 101 West Main. Then there were several rabies quarantines in the city during his reign, and the friends of Pete made sure that he was put up in the opulent quarters of the Del Tor Veterinary Clinic at 171 North Upper. When he wasn't protesting the undeserved imprisonment, he was using the opportunity to charm the furry ladies who were likewise confined at the establishment. This probably accounted for some of the pups who later showed up in newspaper photographs. Smiley Pete did seem to be claustrophobic, though, as a photo in the Herald showed when one night he got closed up in a store. There were many friends of Pete. It seems many people willingly responded to care for Smiley. People like Owen Williams of the Williams Drug Store, Mr. and Mrs. Robert A. Welch at the Welch's Cigar Store, George Saras of the White Spot Restaurant on Main, employees and patrons of Furlongs and Coney Island Restaurants on Limestone, or Carter's Supply up at 339 West Short. He received veterinary care and frequent baths at Del Tor Clinic on North Upper Street, thanks to donations from his friends and neighbors. And remember those policemen on the night beat and the shop owners who made his bed in the inset doorways up and down Main Street? Downtown business owners supplied him with a goodly stream of food and treats ranging from steaks to beer to dog food and, regrettably, the candy that contributed to obesity in his old age. He had plenty of fame, but no fortune. Much of Pete's life and plenty of his shenanigans made front-page news in the Morning Herald and the Evening Leader. Often his friends and patrons, who were downtown business owners, featured him to advertise their stories, services, or community events. Quite a few citations can be found in the microfilmed photographic index of the Herald and the Leader, for pictures taken by staff photographers of those newspapers. One of those photos shows the panhandling pooch eating dog kibble right out of the hand of a Carter Supply Company employee. In another photo op, the town's freshly washed Goodwill ambassador mugs for the camera in Pete fashion with his signature laughing smile and a shiny red bow around his neck. This was to kick off the Christmas shopping season for downtown shops. Various charitable fundraisers used his photogenic charm. A picture published in March 1956 shows the magnificent moocher decked out in official-looking, Pete-sized, Red Cross volunteer purse and shoulder band. When Pete poses with a friend, it is during a visit to see his lady love and her pups who were supposedly the results of a torrid Del Tor clinic affair during a rabies quarantine. The Herald published a photograph of Smiley lying in his bed one night. It is a box with crumpled paper layered inside. This was probably done to reassure concerned citizens. My favorite photograph of all these is the shot of Pete, circa 1954, lying patiently on a downtown sidewalk as a little girl in pigtails pets him. There are still many folk in the area who still remember him. Smiley Pete was caught on camera in tooth-to-tooth -tooth combat with a possum he subdued for invading his territory. 
The photo and the story of the battle which raged from Cottrell's Bakery at 128 North Limestone on over to Woolcott's Garage at 125 West Short Street made front-page news. The Possum Lost And finally, there is the photo of a group of his friends standing around a small wooden box, floral spray in the background. It is taken at the canine con man's final resting place under a sycamore tree on the old Withers estate, which is now near offices for thoroughbred printing on North Broadway. When he died on June 17, 1957, He was approximately 14 years old, but Pete was not forgotten. Many of his friends donated money for an engraved headstone at his gravesite on North Broadway. It says simply, a friend of all, a friend to all. His neighbors installed a memorial plaque in the sidewalk at the intersection of Main and Limestone, his favorite place to lie and watch Lexington grow. This memorial has been moved and replaced many times to protect it from various construction projects and, as of January 2019, can be seen in the sidewalk of the Roberts Courthouse between that water wall fountain and the Main Street curb. The Downtown Lexington Partnership still awards the Smiley Pete Award as a way to recognize those who help create a friendly atmosphere for people in downtown Lexington. 2017's winner was Lisa Betts and her Felsha Irish Import Shop. Smiley's name has been placed in the running a time or two for naming new parks around downtown. In 1991, the Lexington Brewery named one of their new brews, Smiley Pete Beer. And Smiley Pete Publications, our community magazine, has memorialized him by naming their publication for him. They posted his story on their website at smileypete.com. If you want to take a look at Smiley Pete's story, check out smileypete.com. For nearly 14 years, Smiley Pete was Lexington's town dog. He was known as the most magnificent moocher, the panhandling pooch, the canine con man. He was Pete, Smiley, or as it says on his headstone, Smiley Pete, our dog. Thanks for listening to Tales from the Kentucky Room, a podcast brought to you by the Central Library's Kentucky Room staff at the Lexington Public Library. If you enjoyed listening, please take a minute to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. If you have any questions about local history or genealogy research, you can visit us in the Kentucky Room to use our collection and newspaper microfilm. Or you can email us at elibrarian at lexpublib.org. That's elibrarian at l-e-x-p-u-b-l-i-b dot org. I'm Miriam, and we'll be back with another trip down Lexington's memory lane.